Hey there. So this is my uh, routine for getting the kinks out of your body after you've been traveling for a while, specifically for your neck and your back. And I'm using the equipment that I always travel with. So the first thing I always travel with is my yoga tune-up bowls, which is two bowls inside a bag like so. If you don't have these, you can use tennis balls instead and put them into a sock like this. Just make sure there's a bit of room here between the two tennis balls so they can move a little bit. Um, then I also like to travel with the Franklin peanut, peanut roll, which looks like a peanut. Again, if you don't have that, you can use tuna balls or the tennis ball concoction. I also always travel with a um, SOS strap. If you don't have an SOS strap, which has little loops in it like this, you can use a regular yoga strap instead, or a luggage strap is fantastic for this, or a dressing gown belt, which is also great. Um, I also always have a book with me or a rolled up towel, but today I'm going to use a half dome. So if you don't have one of those, again, you can use a regular book, three to five centimeters in thickness, or just get a towel and roll it up tightly. And also having a pillow handy might be nice for some of this routine, okay? So we're gonna start off standing up. You won't see my face for this, but I am still here. We're gonna start up. I'm gonna be using a half dome. You can use a book or a rolled up towel, okay? So we'll start with the calf stretch, standing up. Place the, the book or the roll of towel on the floor. You're gonna put a right foot on top of the book. So the ball of your foot is near the apex. If you've got smaller feet like me, your, your ball of your foot may not reach the apex. So you might be a little bit lower and that's fine. Your right heel is on the ground and you wanna take your left foot parallel to your right foot, legs hip distance apart. If this is too much of a stretch, you're gonna bring your left foot back slightly because you have been traveling. Things might be quite tight in your calves and your hamstrings. So be gentle on yourself, maybe start back here, and then as you get more used to it, bring your left foot parallel to the right foot, and you're standing straight. You're not standing to attention, but you are standing straight, and you might start to feel a pull on the back of your right calf, uh, which is probably where you'll feel most of it, but in fact, you're stretching everything out on your back line. So your hamstring, your lower back, your shoulders, your neck, and even all the way down to your eyebrows, which will help with some of that mental stress from traveling as well. So if this starts to feel okay, you might be able to bring your left foot slightly forward. Again, you don't have to. You're listening to what your body feels like and you're trying to enjoy this calf string, calf stretch here. Standing tall, not standing to attention. Okay, so we're gonna change that now to the left foot. So come out of that and just walk around for a second and see how that right leg feels. It might feel quite different to the left one, which is great because you see the difference already. I'm gonna go on to the left foot now, left ball of the foot near the apex, the right foot is parallel. I'm seeing what that feels like. If it's too tight, I'm taking a step back. Again, I'm standing straight, but I'm not sticking my chest out. My breastbone is relaxed and down. And I'm comparing what that feels like. This side is not as tight for me, and maybe it is for you, so kind of see what that feels like on the calf, on your hamstring. If it feels okay, bring the right foot slightly forward and compare how that feels to the other side. And again, you're holding each stretch for about 30 seconds. You can hold it up to a minute if you wish, but maybe when you just come off the train or the plane or the car, you wanna start with a gentle 30 second stretch. You could repeat the whole routine again if you wanted to, to add another layer. Okay, that's the calf stretch. So now we're moving on to the soles of your feet. And you can do this when sitting on a chair if you're not comfortable standing. And if you are standing, I would always hold on to a wall or a chair beside you. So you're gonna start with a tennis ball or the yoga tuna ball on the floor. And I'm gonna place my, just place the ball kind of underneath the ball of the foot. And you could be holding onto a chair with your right hand or the wall or sitting on a chair. And you're gonna put a little bit of pressure down into the ball of the right foot. You're not trying to break the ball or your foot. There's a little bit of pressure there. And then move on to another point about half, about midway through the front of your foot that you're not on your toes. You're on the ball of your foot in the center of the forefoot. And then add to the side. You'll see the ball on the outside of my um, little toe here. Um, just a little bit of pressure there. And then find another spot. For me, it's about right in the center of my um, sole of my right foot and then a little bit of pressure on the inner arch i'm facing that way of course shown you there and then on the outer arch 
as well. So you just find a few points you want to put a bit of pressure on. Again, it's gentle. I'm going to go back to where I started. And I'm going to let my bowl roll. Let my feet just kind of drape over and let the bowl roll side to side across the top of the foot, but not the toes. And then go in the center of your sole of your foot and try that. It's not as easy in this area, but see what you can do. Remember, it's gentle. You're exploring, and you might start to see the knuckles of your, your toes as you're doing this. And then we'll finish off with rolling up and down. Again, hold on to a chair, hold on to a wall. If you want to truly relax, I'll go back so you can see it better. Just rolling along the sole of my right foot. Of that, stand up and notice how you feel. So your right foot will feel really flat, your left foot will feel maybe different. You may even feel that <laughs> relaxation traveling up the back of your body, even all the way up to your neck already, which is fantastic. So we're going to do that on your left foot now. Place the ball on your left ball of your foot. See what that feels like. If you've got a bunion like I do here, this might be quite sensitive. So again, it's gentle. You might want to sit on a chair instead to do this. Find another spot in the center of your forefoot. And then I'm going to the outside of my forefoot, just underneath the little toe. Then I'm going on the outside edge of the outside arch. I'm just turning around so you can see me better, but you can just stay in one position the whole time. I'm in the center now of my foot. That can be very sensitive, so go easy. And then on the outside arch there, again, that might be sensitive, so go easy. Tune into what things are feeling like. Ideally, your feet are parallel. You can hold onto a wall or a chair to help you here. And then we'll go to the rolling. So go back to where you start under the ball of the foot and let your foot just lean from side to side over the ball. So the toes are relaxed, hanging down. You might see the knuckles of your toes as you do this. And then start to move slowly down your foot so that you're still doing the side to side movement, but you're moving down your foot here. I'm going to turn around, maybe you can see it better there. And now here, all the way down. Okay, then we'll finish off with some rolling. You can hold on to something and roll your foot at length along your toes to your heel. So it feels lovely. And then come out of that. Stand up and see what it feels like. I definitely feel a release in my neck every time I do that exercise. I hope you do too. Okay, so now we are going to go down to using the strap. And before I do that, I'm just going to put the ball back into its bag. So you're going to need a yoga strap now, or a luggage strap is perfect for this. And I'm going to put a pillow behind my head. And we're going to do the hamstring stretch. Okay. So if you've got one of these yoga SOS straps, you can actually put your foot through the loop, but you don't need that. So lie down on your back, low behind your head. Start with my right leg. I'm going to um, put the strap around the ball of my foot and bring my leg up into the air. You can just about see it there <laughs> within the frame there. Okay, so my right leg is in the air and my left foot is on the floor. My knee is bent for the moment and I'm pulling on the strap. This is... Um, an arm exercise. So you're pulling on the strap, your arms are strong, and I want your right leg to relax as much as it can in this position. And your thigh muscles are nice and wobbly here and relaxed. And your arms are holding your leg up in the air. Your arms are doing the work here. Um, you've just been traveling, so you don't want to overdo it. It's not about this. See what happens when I pull my leg up? This leg comes off the ground. You want this leg to be on the floor. Okay, so that's within the range that you work. And this leg is straight. If it's not straight, bring it down, straighten it out. You don't want your knee bent. Just go down to a level where your knee can be straight and then hang out wherever that is, that's fine. But it's not this, make it straight, okay? Pillow behind my head, otherwise it might be stressing out your neck and you've just been traveling, so you don't want to stress out your neck anymore. You might feel the stretch here more in your calves, but you are stretching your hamstrings as well. And if you don't like this exercise on the floor, you can do it standing up instead. So standing up and just leaning forward from your hips, resting your hands on a chair, 
there's a million nice alternatives to doing the hamstring stretch. It's astounding. Okay, so I think that's about 30 seconds. I'll swap over to the other side. Okay, so now I've got my left leg in the air, my right knee's bent for the moment. Checking my pelvis at neutral, tucked under. Come back to neutral. Straighten my right leg out. If I go too high, see what happens? This leg comes off the floor. You're not stretching your hamstrings. So bring your leg back to a point where this leg is on the floor and <coughs> this leg can be relatively relaxed. Maybe you're pulling on the strap with your arms there doing all the work. And the strap is around the ball of your foot, not your toes, at the middle of the foot, around the ball of the foot. That way you're gonna work in your calf as well. And I can definitely feel there. <laughs> try to relax, try to enjoy this as much as you can. It's not my favorite stretch either, but it is an important one to do. It's not just the muscles that you're stretching, but you're stretching your fascia, the whole fascia line. So the whole body suit of your body, your Spider-Man suit is being stretched. So you're stretching the calf area, the hamstring, the lower back, your shoulders, and up towards your eyebrows again in this exercise. Okay, so it's about 30 seconds there. You can hold up to a minute if you like. We'll come out of that. And we're gonna go on to your tummy now. <laughs> Turning around onto your front and this is particularly why I like to use this strap, but you could use any strap for this one. You're going to place the strap around your shin. Okay, so it's not around, it's not around your foot here, it's around your shin. Okay, and bring your tummy. And if you don't have a strap, <clears throat> you could reach around and use your arm here instead. But again, you're not pulling on your foot, you're pulling on your, your shin. So that's why the strap is nice here. So you can eventually relax down with your forehead on the floor and just put a little bit of tension there on the strap, but your leg is not coming off the floor. So the leg stays on the ground and you're trying to bring your pubic bone down to the floor, not letting it come off the floor. It's staying down and I'm pulling on the strap gently as I'm pressing my pubic bone into the floor. And this is gonna bring you a stretch here in the front of your hip flexors. If you've been traveling a lot, you've probably been sitting a lot and the hip flexors are going to be pretty tight. So in a shortened space, so you want to try and release that a little bit by holding this position. You're resting your head on your, your hand here, so there's no tension in your neck. And you might let go of the pubic bone idea every once in a while, and that's fine. But then bring your pubic bone back down into the floor and keep that tension there on the strap. So you can let go of the strap, let the foot relax down to the floor. Just see what that feels like for a moment. So I was working on my right leg there and my right leg feels quite different to my left now. It feels like one unit, whereas my left leg feels like a foot, a shin, a knee and a thigh. I don't know if you feel that difference as well, but it's very, it feels longer on my right leg definitely than my left leg too. Okay, so we'll do that on the left side now. So bring your left leg in. Pull onto your shin if you like, or use the strap. Remember it's, <laughs> remember it's around your, it's around your shin, not around your foot. Over your shoulder, resting your head down. And I'm not pulling the knee off the ground. Remember the knee stays on the floor. My head is relaxed and I'm getting a bit of tension in the strap and I'm pressing my pubic bone down to the floor, gently, always gently. If you let go, what happens? The knee comes off, you might feel some pain in your lower back, which you do not want. So again, you're pressing the pubic bone gently down into the floor, opening up the front of the hip while pulling gently on the strap. And you can do a bit of breathing here as well, that will help relax your nervous system after your travels. Trying to keep your pubic bone down on the floor as you pull gently on the strap. Come on, slowly let go of that strap. Release your leg down, take a moment to see what it feels like. 
hope we fold, both legs feel the same length, nice and long, and they both feel like two separate units, not individual parts. All right, come out of that. Get rid of your strap. You'll be lying on your back now. And this we're going to take the tennis balls in the sock or the yoga tuna balls in the sock. And you're going to be lying on your back. And you probably don't need a pillow for this. Okay, so lie on your back here. And we're going to place the balls underneath your left cheek of your bottom. And they're not going in that way. They're at a little bit of an angle. Okay, so that when you move your hips now from side to side, you feel the toning balls move side to side across the cheek of your left bottom here. Or your left cheek of your bottom, I should say. Um, and you're just massaging the piriformis here. And the glute muscles generally can get quite tight from sitting for long periods of time. Um, and your lower back can get quite stressed and releasing the muscles in your bottom here in your glutes can really help with your lower back. So even though we're not technically in the lower back area, this rolling can have a big impact on how your low back feels. Okay, so we'll come out of that. Let's take a moment to see what it feels like. Maybe straighten out your legs and you might notice quite a difference between the left side of your bottom and the right. That feels really good. I feel very heavy on my left side. I feel like I've tilted to the left. Even my waist feels different on the left. My ribs are heavier. Back of my left leg is closer to the floor and my left leg feels longer again. So um, really nice changes there. So let's do the same on the right side. You've got your, I'm gonna turn around, but you can stay where you are. Okay, you've got your tiny balls again underneath the right side of your bottom. And if the rolling is too intense, you could just leave the balls in that area and just breathe here and let your tissue start to use to it, let your nervous system start to relax a little bit. Um, and then find another spot and hang out there for a bit and find another spot hang out there for a bit so that's an alternative um, or you can do the rolling and the rolling will often let you find the parts that maybe need a bit more attention it doesn't mean that we're looking for pain okay if you find a spot that's painful you're not going to stay in that area you're going to find a spot away from it maybe close to it but not on the pain point itself because we're trying to relax your nervous system to let go of the tension it might be holding and we'll do a little bit more. And if the tennis balls are too intense, you could put a towel on top of the tennis balls so that it's a little bit of cushioning there. Um, again, I don't want to be painful, so there's alternatives there to make it more bearable. And come out of that. Straighten out your legs. Notice what it feels like. Oh yeah, feels really good. Those sides are relaxed, my lower back is released, and my breathing is way more expansive. So when I breathe in, there's loads of tummy and rib work here happening. I'm not pushing anything out. It's just expanding so much better now that I'm relaxed. Okay, so we'll finish off with my favorite one. This one, I'm gonna come up to sitting. I'm gonna turn around. And I would normally use the peanut roll for this, which is a lovely air-filled peanut-shaped roller. And then again, you could use tennis balls instead. You could use the yoga tuna balls. I think they're a bit hard. So if you're going to use the tennis balls or the yoga tuna balls, I would put a towel on top just to make it a bit more comfortable. Um, the peanut roll is perfect for this. And I'm going to place it around your bra strap area. Okay. Now for this, you will need a pillow. If you're not used to it, you will need a pillow behind your head. You may even need couple of pillows particularly if you've been traveling and you're a bit stressed at your destination okay again if you're using these tennis balls you need a bit of gap between so the tennis balls should be able to move a little bit when you place it there so you feel the pressure on either side of your spine not on the spine itself around the brass trap area and you can just relax you can keep your knees bent for the moment and see what this feels like Taking a few breaths in and out. So you're not forcing your stuff down, but you are imagining your ribs starting to relax over this tension that's behind you. And after a while, 
you may be able to take away that pillow and just have one pillow behind you. And after a while then, you might be able to take away the pillow completely and put your head on the floor. But if you're not used to this, you may not like this. And you see the tension here building up in my neck. So that means I need a bit more support for my head in this position. Okay, so that's one position. Then you can roll up a little bit so it goes closer to up your shoulder blades a bit. That might be more comfortable, might be less comfortable. So you can let your head move in this position. You can do a bit of breathing in this position. And if this position is still too intense and you feel like your ribs are really being pushed up towards the ceiling, you could do this standing against the wall instead. So stand against the wall, place the, the tennis balls or the, the roller just above the bra strap and just lean into that area. That's a really good alternative to doing this as well. Now bring it a little bit higher. So now the toning ball is a bit higher, closer to my neck, not on my neck. It's still nestled in between my shoulder blades. And you can also tuck and tilt while you're in any of these positions. And as you do that, the ball will roll a little bit up and down your spine. I'll go a little bit further again, up to the top of my shoulder blades. You can, if you move your arms up and down like this, you'll feel your shoulder blades rolling around the tennis balls or around the peanut roll. And you can do your tuck and tilt again. Feel a little bit of movement there. Taking a breath. I'm going to go back down, so halfway down the shoulder blades, tucking and tilting, see if things are easing up a little bit, and you can make it the movement slower and smaller, and then finishing off back around the bra strap again, tucking and tilting, and taking a few breaths. And then to come out of this, you're just going to lean off to the side, get rid of those tennis balls, bring yourself back down, see what your shoulder blades feel like. They're going to feel amazing after that. You could even take away your pillow, see what that feels like for your neck. Again, amazing relief. And you can move your head from side to side and feel that release through your entire neck, shoulder area. And then take a breath. Notice any increased expansion through the ribs and the tummy. that you can just slowly 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 roll onto your side take a second to get your bearings and then from there use your hand to push yourself up and again slowly get your bearings you're back up into seated and you've hopefully got rid of the aches and pains from your traveling to your destination so you're good to go into your holidays and you could do this routine and um, multiple times during your holidays with if niggles and aches reoccur or even if they don't as a preventative, preventative measure, measure, or you could do the individual exercises themselves at any point as well. So I hope you've really enjoyed that. Any questions, just let me know. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.